Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today with a quick tutorial. Sheila requested in the comments of a video that I did where I introduced my distressed wallpaper pack to my Etsy shop. I had used this paper pack to create some pages for a journal and when I printed them, I printed them onto some coffee stained paper that I had just made quickly that morning. And so she uh, said it sounded like a quick way to do it and asked if I would do a demo. So I'm going to do that today. I think that's the one she wanted. I have also recently done some more kind of uh, busy patterned ones that I'll probably do a demo for later, but I think she wanted the simple, quick, easy ones. So today I did a little experiment myself because when I did mine, Part of what made it so fast for me to do these was I have a special kind of dryer and it's one that not everybody's going to have. I wouldn't have even had it, but it came with the house and it is kind of a steamer dryer where it's actually like a cabinet, a tall cabinet, and there's shelves in there that you can remove and hang things to steam them, like taking them to a dry cleaner, or you can dry sweaters on the shelf and it has five shelves in it that are removable and they're just covered in mesh screen so that you can dry sweaters on them. So I, it was so cold here the day that I was doing my coffee paper that I ended up remembering I had that dryer and I just laid them out. And not only did they dry really fast, is I got the impression of some of the screen from the backside on them and I really liked that. So I wanted to see if I could kind of mimic that with things that just anybody could do. So I did more tests in my oven, which is how I used to dry them when I didn't do them outside. I really like drying the papers outside the most, but it's winter, it's freezing out here. I live in the mountains and it's windy, so even on a hot day, it's not always a good day to dry paper outside. So I have to find other ways to do it. So I did some tests today, and I'll kind of show you a couple of the, the fun things that I found. I ended up using just some scrap paper I had I recently bought a new printer, if, if you've watched the last couple of videos. And prior to that, I was trying to print something on my husband's printer. And I use an Apple and he has Android or, and, um, you know, Microsoft. So he his printer language doesn't work with my computer, even when I downloaded the driver. So anyway, I got all these, I got all these garbage sheets out of his printer. So I decided that it would be fun. They're just simple little patterns and I can even cut them off if I want, but I thought I'd use all this test print stuff for coffee paper today. So this one's a little thicker. This came out of my printer, but it's still just cheap copy paper. And I have these lines that I really like on here because I, instead of using a cookie sheet in my oven, I just used a cooling rack. You know the cooling rack, like if you bake cookies and you take your cookie sheet out and you put it on this little rack on your counter, it's just the size a little bit bigger than this. That is what I dried them on. I wanted to see if I could get something where I could stack more paper other than a tray where you know the moisture is kind of all trapped in the bottom until it dries out. So I thought, and then it left a pattern too, which was kind of fun. So I did some like that, and I think that's the test print I'm gonna do today uh, with the batch that I'm gonna make on camera. I just wanna point out a couple things though when I do this. These little white spots are if you don't get your coffee everywhere. And so you can do that intentionally, and I'll do some like that so you can see. These little spots here, are from uh, salt, putting salt on your paper. This one on this side, I think this is salt and um, a, citru a citrus juice. I used lime juice just in these little uh, plastic things. You could use lemon, you could use a real lime or lemon, but that's just what I had. So um, that's what those bigger spots are. Um, these darker spots, I'm using uh, instant coffee so you can add, you can sprinkle coffee in addition to your liquid coffee and get these darker spots. So that's kind of what that is, but that just gives you that kind of aged, dirty look. And then when you throw the, the coffee on, if you don't get it everywhere and then you just kind of move it around, you can get these kind of um, more drip looking lines, kind of more like this. So that's just kind of moving your pan around. And I'll show all of this, but I just kind of wanted you to see what they are going to end up looking like since these were done earlier. 
So I think that's all. Oh, this is the other thing. The other thing that I'm going to do, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on here. The other thing that I'm going to try to achieve, and I've got to see, okay, if you can kind of see um, a pattern of like screen pattern in here, I was trying to do what my drying rack in the laundry room does. And I did achieve that by using some uh, window screen. I happen to have um, a roll of window screen that you would just get at the hardware store to fix your, your window screens. I had this because I make my own paper and I had made my own screens to make the paper. So I had a roll of this. So I cut just a few pieces that I can layer in with my paper to give me that little screen pattern. So let's get started. All you need is some cheap copy paper. This is 28 pound copy paper. And then I have just a little plastic cup with some coffee that I've already mixed up. You could make it as dark or as weak as you want, depending on the color. I'm just using some instant coffee that I just happen to have little packets of, but you know, you can get it in, in larger containers too, if you, or you may have some of that. You can also, you know, uh, use your, your used coffee grounds and then strain them so that you don't have all the grounds in there. But I just use this because it's easy and then I can sprinkle more. I do have one other cup. I'm going to try something today because I've never used it is I just had some yellow onions last night I was cooking and I had, I thought I'm going to just steep those skins and see what, you know, what color I can get. So I'm going to try that. I haven't done that before. If you don't like the smell of coffee, you can use tea. Um, but I don't mind the smell of coffee and I kind of like the color better. So you're just going to take your, um, I have a, a, a cookie tray with just lined with baking paper. You don't even have to really have that paper in there if you don't want. Um, but I just have uh, that in there and I'm just going to start by getting that first piece wet so it'll kind of stick down. So if you just kind of spritz it with water on both sides, then it'll stick down to your, your paper because we're just going to stack a bunch in here. And then for the real simple ones like I used to copy on the back of, you, you just put as much or as little coffee as you want. And if you, if you just paint it on like this, if I were to leave bits white, then that would stay white. So I think I'm going to just kind of, you know, put a little bit more down and leave some white areas, you know, that'll stay white so that you can kind of see. So I can just leave that like that if I want and then just put another piece of paper down. Okay, and that's all gonna get mushed together. And the more layers, the more papers that I put on top of each other, the more uh, the ones underneath are gonna get diluted and kind of moved around. So when I did those really busy papers, I, I wanted to control, keep some of my pattern more. So I ended up not stacking, the first time I did it, I stacked 21 papers. After that, I didn't stack so many. I, I took them off to dry because at that time I was just drying them outside. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave. You can see there's puddles in different places. Now, the one thing I wanna point out, you see I'm getting wrinkles this way. When you get too many wrinkles, if you don't kind of move them out um, before you bake them, you're gonna end up that they'll stay there, which is a great look. I love the look. But if you want to run these through your copy machine, I'm going to iron them anyway, but if you want to run them through your copy machine, just be aware of that. Um, you might not want to have, you know, too many of those wrinkles. The other thing you can do is, you know, copy your actual stained paper, scan it, and, and, and print that on one side. I just happen to like the texture of the uh, paper after it's been copy dyed rather than just a photocopy of it. So I've just sprinkled a little bit of co coarse kosher salt on it, and you can use um, fine. We'll give you a different kind of um, of the spots. They'll be smaller, and you know if your paper's too dry, you can always just spritz it a little bit more. But you're going to be introducing more liquid. So I've just sprinkled a little bit of salt so we can see what that's going to look like, and then I'm just going to layer another one. And you just keep doing this and do as many as you want. Now all those other. Um, busier papers, I just did more things. You know, you can add different colors, multi-colors. I've also used matcha tea. Um, instant matcha tea is kind of that, you know, olive green color that's really pretty. So you can see where it's pulling darker 
that's going to end up being darker. So the, the way I was doing papers before when I was just tea dyeing or coffee staining a bunch is I would have like a, a deeper pan with my liquid coffee in it and I would just dip the paper and bake it, dip the paper and bake it. So you, you don't get all that interest though. You're just getting um, the tint of the color, but not all the character. So I kind of like this for really grungy things. So on this one, I'm just gonna put some more coffee and then I'm gonna add one of those screens to this one. And it's not gonna really do too much right now, but when you bake it, it will. And then I, I can put um, maybe a little bit more so it'll come through to my, to my top paper. Because what happens when you do it this way too is you'll get a different pattern on the top than you do on the bottom. So on this one, I'm gonna add coffee. And then I think I'll also add some of the lime juice just so we can see the, the bigger resist is what it'll kind of give you. So I'm just gonna splatter some of that on there. I know you can't see it. When you do, you may be able to see that a little bit. You can kind of see it spreading out already. So when you do that with like black ink or the darker inks, you really get that kind of um, fading. You know, it, it'll kind of like little flowers that are growing. Okay, so that and then maybe a little salt too. I don't know how many I have here. I don't want to get too many at one time before I go try to bake it. Let's see if I can kind of count three. I think I have six here. So I think what I'm gonna do, just because I wanna see how long they take in the oven like this, I'm gonna go ahead and I think put another screen on the top of this one to get some other pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and put it onto my rack. The I'm gonna go put this on the cooling rack in the oven so that it, it doesn't have this pan underneath. It'll just have more air flowing and see if that is any quicker. So. I will be right back. Okay, I've set that timer for 10 minutes at 350 for six pages, um, all stacked on top of each other. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to start another one with this onion just to see the difference. I think this one's gonna end up looking more like tea because it's so light. Weaker than tea even maybe. And I think just for fun, I'm also gonna drip a little bit of coffee on that too. Oh, and the thing I didn't do on the other one that I wanted to do, so I'll do coffee on this one, is I want to add um, some of the sprinkled coffee on there. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little. Just like that. And you'll see it'll start to just dissolve. So you could leave it like that, or you can spritz that, or add some more coffee drips so that it'll kind of spread out more. Um, you can spritz just certain areas with your water. This is how, if you watched um, 
the Bodhi journal series. This is kind of how I did the cover. It's different. There's more stuff on the cover, but um, using the instant coffee and then spritzing it, that's how I did that. So I like how that looks. And then see, you can kind of move it, um, move your pan around just to get a different look. And then when I put another paper on top of that, it'll dilute that. You can see how it's fading more and more as that extra water is just kind of dissolving it. Um, and then when you do this, you're gonna get some on the other paper too. So that's my pile of paper. I think I'll do this last one with just onion. It doesn't look like much right now, the onion, but I have a feeling that when it dries, you'll see more color. And I think to show that, I'm gonna do some salt again. So you'll be able to see that it's not just white. Okay, so I'm gonna go check on that other pan and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and it's been more like 18 minutes, I think, if I, or 13 minutes, 18, 13 minutes, something like that. So I had set it for 10 minutes. Um, I went and checked the oven at five minutes and the top one was dry. So I took it off at 10 minutes. The next top one was dry. So I took it off and then I did it another three minutes. And that one's dry. This one's a little damp. I can finish it with my iron. These were the ones on the bottom. So I wanted to show you. So they're just still a little damp, but I'm gonna finish that with my iron real quick here and you'll see. Um, and then that one was the one that was on the very bottom, has a little bit of white, but you can see the lines from the um, oven racks, which I kind of like. So that was that. And then when I checked the five minute mark on the oven, I put that second batch in my dryer and still has salt on it, which I'll get all that off. This is the one with the onion and I'll go iron it so you can see it better. Um, but that was the top. These are almost, these are as dry as the ones that didn't get quite dry there. And those were only in for maybe five minutes in, in, the, um, in my stand up dryer. So I'll be right back after I've ironed these. I wanna get all the salt off and, and get them finished and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and all of my papers are ironed and dry. And that just took me another couple of minutes. Um, so let's look at these real quick. These are the ones I actually did on camera. So you can see where I left on some of that first one, the, the, some of the white showing so you could see that. And then this had a little bit of salt on it. And you can see it's darker on one side than the other side. Um, that's kind of the thing I like about this is you get two-sided papers with two different sides because you're stacking them. Um, so I kind of like that. And this, I think I didn't cover completely and then just kind of swirled it around, has a little salt. I don't know that these are in the order that they were out of the pan. This one, you can see the salt and some darker color on there also. If I get that in the light for you correctly. But these are just nice um, plain backgrounds for when you want to print something on the other side or even just, you know, to use them in your junk journal. This is the one that had the kind of double stripes where I had moved the pan. I checked them and then I put them back and I, I had moved them a little bit. Um, and again, with the salt on that on the other side. This is probably the side that was at the very bottom, so it had the most coffee. And then that's also where the, the cooling rack rested. And that one you can see just a little bit of stripes. This is with the onion skin and I really like that color. I don't know how much you're gonna see it here on camera, but um, it's really nice. It's just a very pale yellow. You can see the white in between and then I had sprinkled the coffee on it too. You can even see a little bit where the screen, it's really subtle, the screen that I added. Mostly because I didn't have anything weighting it down to really press it on there. When it's laying in my dryer on the screens, the paper's wet, so it's really all up against that screen, so that actually transfers better. This one you can see a little bit, but some of these may have come out of that dryer. This is the onion. So this one did, I did put the onion ones in my other dryer. And that one you can kind of see, I know it's not showing up on camera, but the yellow here is, is brighter. So you can kind of see if I point it towards the window there. But that's a nice color, nice springy color. And then again, with just a little bit of the onion skin, and I think this is probably the top one that had a little bit of coffee and a little bit of onion skin. 
and that one again. It just has a really nice kind of soft parchment look. This side has much more yellow, and then this side is kind of more of a tea stain. So that's the batch that I just did on camera. So I know not everybody has, um, you know, the same kind of setup I do for drying. And I am my actually my favorite one was when I dried them on the opened up black garbage bag because I liked that it left the wrinkles from the garbage bag on the paper too. They weren't real wrinkles like like these are real wrinkles. It was it was wrinkles transferred from the garbage bag which was wrinkled to the paper just as kind of a print. So I really like that the best. So if you have time you know, and, and a place that you can just lay them out to dry naturally, that's the best thing. So other ideas I have, um, we're on, only in the winter time, are we on uh, heated floors, um, radiant floor heat, and not everybody has that either, but you may live in the part of the world that does. So if you have radiant floor heat, then the, just the warmth from the floor with that black garbage bag down, that only took um, maybe an hour or so for my papers to dry. So I'm gonna be doing that again, I think, just because I like that the best. But I was trying to see if I can do a quicker way, um, you know, hanging them out on a, a closed drying rack or something. You might have a dryer, just your regular dryer. If you have one of those racks that fits into that dryer, I know they exist because I think I had one at one time. There's a rack that you can put into your dryer to dry sweaters and it, it, your tumbler goes around, the dryer goes around, but that rack stays flat. You could lay paper out there and then dry it and walk away. I kind of like that it's quicker than, I don't really like the oven idea as much because you have to watch it. And it takes, you know, if you stack your papers, it's gonna take 10 or 15 minutes for one batch to, uh, to dry out. So, you know, you do whatever you have, you work with what you have, but, um, that's just the method that I used to make all those papers. That way you get a whole batch of different but coordinating papers. So I hope if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and leave any questions you have in the comment. And if you would like to see me do one um, with these more textured papers, these were also done in that same pan. They were just done with different products, different um, ingredients. So if you'd like to see something like that, then I can do another demo. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.